First, we're going to review how to solve different types of equations and inequalities. One of the things that's tripping you up is when I have fractions. So there's two different situations when I have fractions. One is like this first problem where the entire side is a fraction. And then the other is like the next problem where I have a fraction but I have some other stuff going on with the fraction. So I'm going to approach these two problems differently. So in the first one, since the entire side is a fraction, I'm going to get rid of the denominator by multiplying both sides by 5. So I get x minus 3 equals 35. And then I add 3 to both sides. So x equals 38. And the next one, before I want to multiply by the denominator, I need to get my fraction by itself. So to get my fraction by itself, I'm going to add 8. So y over 3 equals 1 plus 8 is 9. And then I can get my denominator by itself, or get the numerator by itself by multiplying by the denominator. So y equals 27. Then we start having multi-step equations where we're going to have to do some more work. When I see these parentheses, I'm going to distribute what's in front. So 2x minus 6 minus 5x equals 4 minus 5x. Now I look on the same side and see if I can combine anything. So I can do 2x minus 5x, which would be negative 3x. Copy everything else down. And now I like to move my variable first, so I'm going to move the negative 5x over. So 2x minus 6 equals 4. And now we have a two-step equation, so add 6. 2x equals 10. And divide by 2 to get that x equals 5. When we move on to inequalities, inequalities are the same as equations, except for when we multiply or divide by a negative, then we're going to switch my inequality. So looking at this first one, it's really just like a two-step equation. We're going to add 14. So 3x is less than or equal to 18, and divide by 3. So x is less than or equal to 6. The next one, make sure you do the first step is minus 8. So I'll be negative 45. And now when I do the next step of dividing by a negative, you have to remember that when I divide by a negative, it's going to switch my inequality. So instead of a greater than, it changes to a less than. And that's less than 9. For this next one, we're still going to start with distributing. So I have two sets of parentheses to distribute. I get 2x minus 6 plus 5 is greater than 3x minus 3. I'm going to see if I can combine anything. On the left side, I can combine that negative 6 plus 5, which would be negative 1. And I copy down everything else. I like to move my variable first, so I'm going to move my 2x, which leaves me with negative 1 is greater than x minus 3, and then add 3 to both sides. So 2 is greater than x, or I could switch everything around and say x is less than 2 is also correct. Now we add in some stuff where I have some variables. Okay, but it's really the same thing as solving for an equation. I'm just not going to be able to simplify things and squish things together, if you will. So this one says to solve for y. So my first step is going to be to find where y is in my equation. 
And then what am I doing to y? I'm multiplying by 2 and then adding 3a. So I'm going to get rid of that 3a first by subtracting 3a. So I get 2y equals, I can't combine negative 5x and negative 3a, so I write negative 5x minus 3a. And then in front of y, I have 2, so I'm going to divide everything by 2. So my answer is y equals negative 5x minus 3a over 2. And I could have split that up into multiple fractions if you want. To the right, we're solving for r. So r is being multiplied by t. So to get rid of multiplication, we're going to divide. So r equals d over t. The last one in this section, we have a fraction. So we're going to think about how we just talked about how to deal with fractions. And I'm trying to get b by itself. So the whole right side is a fraction. So I'm going to get rid of that denominator first by multiplying by what's in the denominator. So I get 2a equals a plus b. Remind yourself what we're solving for, which is b. So I need to move the a and subtract a. So I have 2 capital A minus little a equals b. And those capitals matter in this because they're one's lowercase, one's uppercase, so that means they're representing two different things. Now we're going to get to slightly more complex types of inequalities and equations. The compound inequalities are just like a normal inequality. It's just that there are two of them in one problem, and I'm usually going to graph my answer. So when they're connected with or, that means I only need my x value to work in one of the inequalities. It doesn't have to work in both at the same time. And we just solve these completely separately. So if I look at the one on the left, I would minus 5. So 3x is less than negative 12, and I'm going to divide by 3. So x is less than negative 4, or solve the right inequality, minus 8, minus 8, negative 4x is less than or equal to 12, divide by negative 4. Remember when I divide by a negative, it needs to be greater than or equal to, so greater than or equal to negative 3. And when I graph this one, of course I decided to start with one that's kind of special. If I think about graphing this on a number line, we're just going to put our important numbers, which in this one are negative 4 and negative 3. So if I want all the numbers that are less than negative 4, that's going to go that way. And then in my other color, greater than or equal to negative 3. Notice I have my whole number line will be covered with either red or blue or both. So this is actually going to be all real numbers as my answer. I didn't really mean to give you one like that, but it's good to talk about. So there we go. The other two are connected by and. When you have it as one piece, that means that it's saying and. And when it's one piece like this, what we can do is just pretend we're solving and trying to get x by itself. So what's being done to x, we're adding 3. So we're going to undo it with minus 3. So we get negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. x is in the middle. And 5 minus 3 is 2. So on my number line, my two important numbers here are negative 4 and 2. And my x is going to be everything between them. Since they're both just less than signs, that means they're going to be open circles for my endpoints. In the next one, we have an uh, and statement, an and compound inequality written, but they're separate inequalities versus being squished together like the other one. And we just solve it separately. So distribute 2x minus 8 is less than 3x plus 6. I like to move my variables, so I'm going to move negative 2x. So negative 8 is less than x plus 
6. And when I minus the 6, I get negative 14 is less than x. And doing the one on the right, we're going to add x. So 2x minus 8 is less than 4. Add 8, so 2x is less than 12. And this one is x is going to be less than 6. Graph. So my two important numbers are negative 14 and 6. I know both of these are going to be open circles. Let's start with the easy one, which is that x is going to be less than 6. So that's going this way. For the other one, the, we can flip the inequality and make it x is greater than negative 14. And since I have an and statement, that means I want where I have both the blue and the red, which is this middle part here. So I could just graph just the yellow. All right, moving on to absolute value equations and inequalities. So with equations and inequalities, if we're dealing with absolute value, the most important thing is we have to get the absolute value bars by themselves. That has got to be the only thing on one of the sides before I can go any farther. Then what we're going to do is use the fact that the absolute value of, say, positive 6 is positive 6, and the absolute value of negative 6 is also a positive so in the first problem, it's already been isolated. So once we've done that, we're going to write two different equations. I'm going to copy the first equation, but just drop my absolute value bar. So x minus 3 equals 5. But I could also have that x minus 3 equals negative 5. So you change the sign. And it's going to be the... Um, same thing if I do the absolute value of negative 5 will give me positive 5, which is why I can do this. So copy down your first one, and then copy down what's inside the absolute value bars, but change the sign to a negative. And then we solve our little baby equation. So add 3, and I get x equals 8. And then add 3, and I get x equals negative 2. If I look at the next one, what I notice is that I have a whole bunch of junk over here with my absolute value bars. So I can't do the plus and minus stuff yet because I have to get this red blob that I'm circling right now by itself. So if I had three times whatever blob minus three equals 18, what would I normally do to get that little blob or variable by itself? We would add three. So we would get 3 blob, let me draw it like a rectangly thing, equals 21. And then to get that blob by itself, we would divide by 3. So I would get my blob equals 7. But what did I originally blob? My original blob was absolute value of 3 minus 5 r. And now I'm going to continue like the first example, where since my absolute value is by itself, I'm going to copy it down without the absolute value bars for one equation. And then for the other equation, I'm going to copy it down without absolute value bars but make it equal to negative 7. And here we go. On the left side, let's minus 3. So negative 5r equals 4. And then we're going to divide by negative 5. So r equals negative 4 over 5. Then in the right one, minus 3. Notice my steps are really the same thing negative 5r equals negative 10. And when I divide by negative 5, I get that r equals 2. So those are my two solutions, negative 4 fifths and positive 2. So looking at my next one, 
I have stuff over here that's outside my absolute value bar, so I need to get my blob of my absolute value by itself. So the first thing I need to do is minus that 7. And when I do that, I get that my blob equals negative 5. Now, think about it. What is my blob? My blob is 3x minus 7. And when I'm doing the absolute value of something, it's always going to be positive. So is there a way for something that's always going to be positive to equal negative 5? No. So there's no solution. When we're doing absolute value, equations and inequalities, and you get a negative on the right side once it's by itself, once the absolute value is by itself on the other side, then we're going to have special situations. When it's equations, like we just did, it's always no solution. When we do inequalities next, sometimes it's no solution and sometimes it's all real numbers. So let's see what happens there. So absolute value equations and inequalities has really similar ideas. We need to get the absolute value bars by itself. But when I break it up into two inequalities, I have to know whether to combine them with or or combine them with and. And this is where I had the kind of great or than, to think of it as great or than. If it's a greater, then it's going to be connected with or. If it's less than, it's connected with and. So in this one, I'm going to be connecting it with and because it's a less than. So the first thing I check is that my absolute value bars are by themselves, which they are. So now we're going to split this up into two inequalities. So we start with writing our inequality without the absolute value bars, just like I see it. And then I put my connector word, which in this case is going to be and. And now I'm going to do 2x plus 3. Switch your inequality. Switch your sign. And now I have my two inequalities to solve. So minus 3. 2x is less than 8. Divide by 2. So I need x is less than 4. And then minus 3. So 2x is greater than negative 14. Divide by 2, so x is greater than negative 7. So I need both of those to be true. On my number line, they're going to be both open circles. So I need less than 4 while it's also greater than 7. So this bit in between. Usually when it's and, it's going to be one piece. When it's or, it'll be two pieces. Okay, so let's look at this one. My absolute value is by itself. It's a great or than, so I'm going to be connecting things with or. So drop it like it's hot. 2x plus 4 is greater than 10. Drop it. 2x plus 4. Switch. Less than. Switch your sign. All right. Solve your two inequalities. So minus 4. So 2x is greater than 6. Divide by 2. x is greater than 3. Or minus 4, so 2x is less than negative 14, divide by 2, x is less than negative 7. So on my number line, I have my two numbers, negative 7 and 3. They're both an open circle, and it's greater than 3 or less than negative 7. Looking at this one, we don't have my absolute value bars by themselves. So the first thing I need to do is get my absolute value bar by itself. Once again, if it helps to think of it more as a blob, then that's totally fine. How do I get this blob by itself? Well, my first thing would be to add 4. And that would give me 2 blob is greater than or equal to 6. And that 2 is being multiplied to my blob, so I'm going to divide by 2. And I get that my blob is greater than or equal to 3. And I can replace what was in my blob, absolute value of x minus 1. So at that point, we can split up into my two inequalities. It's a great or, so it's going to be or, than. And my two inequalities are drop it, 
So x minus 1 is greater than or equal to 3. And then x minus 1, switch it, less than or equal to, switch it, negative 3. So add 1, and we get x is greater than or equal to 4. Or add 1, x is less than or equal to negative 2. On my number line, we have negative 2. We have 4. We need greater than or equal to. Do you like my filled in dot there? It's a beautiful filled in dot. Greater than or equal to 4 and less than or equal to negative 2. And last one. So the first thing I need to do is get my absolute value bars by themselves. So my first step is going to minus 5. So I get that the absolute value of 3x plus 4 is less than or equal to negative 2. Okay, my absolute value is by itself. And what do I have over here? Negatives. Okay, so when I get a negative, I need to think, what kind of number am I always going to have an absolute value? My absolute value is always going to be a positive number. And what I want to say is, is a positive number less than or equal to negative 2? No, a positive number is bigger than or equal to negative 2. So this is going to be no solution. If instead it had been a greater than, if it said absolute value of 3x plus 4 